hearts of a bite no Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's remind one another that we do this message and we give this message in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are in the period of Advent. This is the time period that leads us up to the great celebration of Theophany. As you remember, we discussed this, that in the Armenian tradition, we don't call it Christmas, but Theophany, meaning Astvaza Haidnutyun, God is revealed. Because in the Christmas message, we see that God loved us so much, He gave us His only begotten Son, essence of the Father, that is, God Himself was revealed on that day. And we know that on the day of January 6th, when we celebrate not only the Nativity, but also the Baptism, at that moment in history, God the Father, God the Son being baptized, God the Father said, this is my beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descends upon them, and the Holy Trinity is revealed. Asvaza Haidnutyun, God's revelation, the revelation of God. That's the celebration that's coming up, and of course, that's a mouthful to say, Asvaza Haidnutyun. Sometimes it's so much easier to say Christmas. It, it encompasses everything. It is a part of Christ. It is the mass of Christ. And that is, of course, the celebration. Whichever way you say it, Theophany, Christmas, however you say it, the message is very clear. Jesus is the reason of the season. And most importantly, Jesus being in our midst. He is revealed. God is revealed. We have an opportunity to improve ourselves, to understand that love in our lives. Now this is the period of Advent. It, it prepares us. It gets us ready for Theophany. And every week, as I shared with you last week and the week before, the, our church fathers give us a prescription. In other words, they give us the necessary tools to understand that big celebration of Theophany. And it prepares us now today's message comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, the story of the great banquet. This, I have to tell you, has to be one of my all-time favorite stories that Jesus tells. This is a parable. He speaks of it and he reminds us of what this season is all about. Now, I'm going to share with you first the story and then we'll talk about it, okay? So it comes to us from Luke, chapter 14 verses 15 and following. He says, when one of those who sat at the table with Jesus heard this, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. So somebody's making a revelation. Somebody's saying, hey, this is great. I'm with Jesus right now. And blessed is that person that can be with Jesus, the kingdom of God. What do you think Jesus says? You're, all, you're right? No. Jesus turns around and he gives this beautiful parable. Let's listen to it carefully. He says, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent out his servants to say to those who had been invited, come for all is now ready. And they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have bought a field and I must go out to see it. I pray you have me excused. Another says, I have bought a yoke of oxen and I have to go examine them. Oxen, that was like the, the, the cars of those days. That's like somebody saying, well, I bought a new car and I want to go test drive it, okay? I pray that you excuse me. And another said, I just got married and therefore I cannot come. Well, I'm going on a honeymoon. I can't come to your banquet. Another excuse. And so the servant came and reported this to the master of the house, the man who had made this big banquet. And then he, the, the, the master said, he said uh, to his servant, go out quickly to the streets, to the lands and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the maimed and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, sir, what you have commanded has been done, and there is still room here. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited 
shall taste my banquet. Wow! Can you believe that? Here's a guy who's putting together this incredible banquet, this incredible party. He's having a party that he wants everybody to come to. And one by one, everybody makes excuses. And so he says, okay, fine, you're not coming. There's room. I've made a party. I'm going to have a great time. And so go out there and find everybody who wasn't invited. Let them come in. Of course, Jesus is talking about all, in, all of us, that we are invited to God's kingdom, to God's party, and we are the ones who make excuses. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, you know, if I received a, an invitation from God, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no to it. I mean, you know, if God invited me to a party next week, hey, I'd be there. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Well, God invites us all the time. God invites us to act in love, to act in compassion. And we make excuses. God says, be good to one another. And we say, not everybody, right? God says, take care of this world that I've given you. And what do we do? We pollute it. We take advantage of the situations that are all around us. We, we take advantage of the resources that we have. God says, I've given you talents. Use them. And we know how to sing. We know how to play music. We know how to build things. But instead of using those talents for good, what do we do? We abuse those talents. And so slowly we see that if we look very carefully, we are saying no to God. We are finding excuses to stay away from the goodness that God has prepared for us, from that party that God has prepared for us. And every one of us does that. Every one of us finds an excuse to say no to God. Why? Well, for a variety of reasons. This is not the, the lesson today of wondering why, but now that we have made excuses, how do we come back? Well, it's very easy. Look at what Jesus says. He says, God wants us to be in his party. He wants us to sit at his table. He wants us to be part of his household and his family. You know, the family of God is such an important thing. In, in some traditions, they call it the holy family. And they have the picture of Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. Jesus says the holy family is who? Remember at one point, his mother and his brothers come up and he says, who are my mother and my brothers? But those who hear the word of God and do it. So in other words, we all now have an opportunity to be a member of his family and a member of his party, a participant in the party. And it doesn't matter. And in fact, St. Paul says there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither female nor male. There is neither slave nor free person. In other words, there is, no, there is no requisite except to say yes to God. To say yes, I'm ready to love. To say yes to that invitation. Now, this is the story. But the prequel is a few, is a few verses before. And I'm going to invite you to read that because it's an explanation of what this story is about. And uh, even more, you know what it is? It's an opportunity for us to make this Christmas season a real opportunity to celebrate Christ's birth. Because you see, if, if you were going to anybody's birthday party, what would you do? You would obviously buy them something that they wanted, right? Hey, it's just typical. If I go to my friend's party and I know my, my friend enjoys a certain kind of thing, that's what I would probably do. If I know my uh, friend enjoys music, I might go out there and buy an iTunes card. And, you know, he, he would have a bunch of music that he would listen. If he didn't enjoy music, certainly I wouldn't give him something that he wouldn't enjoy. Well, guess what? Christmas is Jesus' birthday. So wouldn't it make sense that we give Jesus what he wants for his birthday? Yeah, that makes sense, right? It's his birthday party. So what do we get Jesus for his birthday? Well, just before he tells the story, he gives us the answer. So we heard the banquet story. This is a few verses before. This is verse 12. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your kinsmen or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return, and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, invite the maimed, invite the lame, 
invite the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Here is the prescription now that our fathers give us for this Advent season. What do we do for Jesus' birthday? We provide gifts. And Jesus is telling you where he wants those gifts to go. To people who have no way to pay you back. In this Christmas season, we are told, you give gifts to people and they will return that favor to you. Jesus says, that's not what I'm about. You see, God gave us a gift and we have absolutely no way of paying him back, do we? God gave us the gift of life. Hey, if you can breathe right now, take a deep breath. That's the greatest gift that you have, isn't it? I mean, if you can't, if you can't breathe, you're not living, right? So if you're living right now, the greatest gift is life. God has given you that gift. How can you pay him back? He's telling you. He's telling you right here. You can't take something and throw it up into heaven and say, here, God, I'm paying you back. He's saying there's another way. Love people. Take care of people who have absolutely no way of paying you back. Just like you have no way of paying back God, except to do good to others. So go out there and help strangers. Help people who are in need. Help the lame, the maimed, the blind. This is the way in biblical times they express the people who had difficulties. But you know all around us, there are people who have physical ailments. There are people who have psychological difficulties, emotional difficulties. One of them is loneliness. One of them is the lack of respect. To be able to go up and find somebody and show them that respect. Give them the time, the gift of your time in their, in their lives. Make something for them. Take over something that reflects your love. And don't expect anything in return. You know, they have these little traditions in many offices. You know, we have office parties. And we're supposed to give gifts to people. Okay, well, how much? Not too expensive. This year, they put a price tag on it, $20, $25. Don't spend anything more. Sometimes they have traditions where you pick somebody's name, they pick somebody else's name, and you give each other gifts that you don't even know who you're giving to. What does that mean? Jesus says, that's not the way I want you to celebrate my birthday. You want to celebrate my birthday? Here's the formula. Give to people who have no way of giving you back. This is the message that Jesus wants us to remember on Christmas. On Christmas, he gives us the gift of life, eternal life. He gives us that oneness of love, that opportunity to live in love for eternity. That gift can be only repaid, can only be given back by us extending that love to one another. Get involved. In your church, get involved in your community to get out this word, to get out this goodness to people, to share the love of God, to share the goodness of God. Get out there and help some people who are hungry out on the street. Help some people who are lonely. Help some people who just need maybe some compassion and need some help in their lives. Take some time to help a young child who is having difficulty learning. Take some time. The, the value of your life is expressed in the goodness that you do for others. Take some time to share that goodness with others. And you'll find out that Christmas becomes real. Get involved in your community. Get involved in your church. This is the way to celebrate Christmas. Hey, I'm going to look forward to coming back with you next week. And we'll be continuing on this theme of Advent in how to prepare for Astvaza Haidnutyun, the Feast of God's Revelation. Get involved in your church. If you want to get involved with me, you'll find me at epostle.net. That's Apostolic Evangelism for an electronic and expanding universe. Until next week, I want to remind you that we do all of this to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.